everybody's on a budget, money's tight, gas is expensive, and in the leather craft hobby, we're trying to figure out where can we get the biggest bang for our buck. Well, that's what we're talking about today. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Dave Norris. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today we're gonna to be talking about how you can stretch your dollar when it comes to buying leather tools. Let's face it, nowadays everybody's on a budget. Gas is expensive, food's expensive, everything's expensive. So we wanna get tools that number one are affordable, number two that we're gonna use, and number three that are gonna stand the test of time. And that's what we're talking about today. In fact, we're gonna be looking at it from two different angles. The first side is these are the tools that I use on almost every project that I could not live without. The other is we're looking at this from a tooling carving standpoint. You know, there's all kinds of different facets of leather work. Well, this today is primarily gonna apply to tooling and carving. So before we get too far into it, I wanted to kind of give you my approach, my philosophy on buying new tools. And this is not original to me. I picked it up from Adam Savage. Adam's one of the guys that was on Mythbusters back when that TV show was on, on the air. He has a YouTube channel now, and he's talked about his philosophy when it comes to buying new tools. And his thought, and I agree with this, is if you're not sure that you're gonna use a tool, you think you're going to, but you're not sure, then buy the least expensive version of that that you can. Use that to prove yes or no, I'm gonna use this, it's useful, I, you know, it helps make my job easier. And then from there, once you've proven yes, I'm gonna use this, I like this, then we go out and we buy the best quality version of that that we can afford. That way we've got quality tools, but we've also not spent a bunch of money on things that we may or may not need. With that in mind, let's go ahead and jump in. So first up in the list is a tool that I use on almost every project. There's a few projects out there that I've done where I probably wouldn't use this tool. Uh, those are gonna be the really rustic, primitive kind of projects where you want a really rough, ragged look to them. Other than that, I'm gonna be using this tool, and that is the Master Tool Edge Bevel. It's got a, a nice wooden handle on it, fits really nice in your hands. I believe it's maple. Uh, it maintains an edge really well. The little prongs that stick out on the front, they're not sharp. I've used other versions of uh, this, the tool, not the master tool version of it, but other, you know, other brands. Sometimes those are sharp and you know, they can open you up if the tool slips, I've done that. But this maintains an edge really well. Uh, it's easy to maintain with a little bit of you know, uh, ongoing maintenance with it, but that's pretty minimal. But this is absolutely a tool that, in my opinion, you have to have in your arsenal, and that would be the Master Tool Edge Bevel. Now, if we're talking about maintaining your bevel, because let's face it, no matter what brand you have, that cutting edge can get dull. It's just like your swivel knife. It needs to be stropped, it needs to be polished, it needs to be honed. So how do we do that? That little end right there is kind of hard to get to, and even if you could, how do you do that? The, the best way that i found to do that is the, the strop board from Weaver. This is the Master Tool strop board, and what you have is you have a wooden block with uh, four strips of leather in it. There's two different sizes of leather. So you've got two sizes of leather here and the, the same two sizes of leather over here. You've got a plastic divider down the middle. Now, the reason you have the plastic divider is that we're putting aluminum oxide on one side of the board. And that aluminum oxide just helps to polish and hone more so than, than the uh, jeweler's rouge would. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking our, our wax. We're gonna wax one side of it. We're gonna dedicate one side of it to the aluminum oxide. The other side's gonna be dedicated to the jeweler's rouge. Whichever side that we pick for the aluminum oxide, we're gonna take our wax, we're gonna wax that strip of leather, and then we're gonna dust a little bit of the aluminum oxide on there, and then we're gonna strop our, our bevel just like we would if we were stropping our swivel knife. Once we've done that, we're gonna switch over to the other side, we're gonna apply our jeweler's rouge to that, and then again, we're gonna strop it just like we would uh, our swivel knife. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help us maintain that cutting edge on our bevel. So if you're gonna to be tooling leather, you gotta have some stamps. Pretty hard to do it without that. It can be done, but it's a lot more difficult. If you're brand new to the hobby, I would suggest that you start with the basic stamping kit from Weaver. It's got your six basic tools in there and a swivel knife. Fantastic place to start. Everything's in there, ready to go. But what if you've moved 
past the, the six basic and you wanna start adding some more advanced tools, well, the ones I'm gonna show you, they're not in advanced in the, the aspect that they're hard to use. They just, they're more specific. They're more uh, tailored to specific jobs. And the first thing that I would take, uh, tell you to take a look at would be the steep bevel. There's three different grades of, and grades, I don't mean quality, I mean like a grade, like an incline. The first one would be a traditional bevel. We see that in the basic tooling kits, the one that we all started using when we first got into the hobby. Then you have steep and then extra steep. And the steep bevel is one of my favorites because not only does it create a really crisp line, but it also does quite a bit of beveling and shadowing. And a lot of times that's what you're gonna be going for. So the steep bevel is definitely something you need in your toolkit. After that, I would say that you need a pear shader. And the, the pear shader that comes in the basic kit, the one that we all started with, is kind of egg shaped, right? Well, this one's much more elongated. The one I use has lines on it. You might want to start with the checkered one. It's a little easier to use than the one with lines on it. But this elongated one really allows you to, to expand and taper all that shading that you would traditionally do with a pear shader. So this is one of my favorites, absolutely couldn't live without it. In fact, I've completely replaced my traditional pear shader with this one. After that, the next three that I would suggest you look at are pedal lifters. One of the challenges with stamp style pedal lifters is that when you, you start driving them in, they can leave a heel mark as they go in and under the pedal. Well, the ones from Weaver, that heel has basically been ground off. I have yet to get one of those heel impressions when using these pedal lifters on a project. So the, if, if we're talking about the stamp style pedal lifters, these are some of my favorite. They actually do a better job than some of the much more expensive ones because they don't leave that heel mark. So pedal lifters are absolutely something you need in your, in your tooling kit. It really is what gives it that three-dimensionality, that lift, that life, that a lot of the other tools just can't provide. So the next tool that I'm gonna share with you is definitely an unconventional leather tool. It's not something you're gonna buy at most leather shops, even though it is one of the most uh, valuable, crucial tools I have in my tooling kit. And that is a pair of digital calipers. So the reason these are so important to me, let's say that I told you that we have a tooling area that's three and one eighth inch wide. So three and an eighth. And I need you to find the center mark on that. Can it be done? Absolutely. How much frustration and how much time is involved with finding the center of a three and one eighth inch mark, right? Well, with these, if I have it set to three and one eighths, I can hit the mode button and it'll switch between inches fractions, inches decimals, and millimeters. Now, I'm not one that uses millimeters. I don't use the metric system very much, but if you tell me the what's half a three and one eighth, well, it takes me a little while to figure that out. Three and one eighth is essentially 79.5 millimeters. Well, we can round that up to 80, right? Because we're talking about a half a millimeter. So half of 80, it's pretty easy. That's 40. I can divide millimeters in half a whole lot easier than I can inches and in decimals or inches and in fractions. So for that reason and a whole lot more, the digital calipers to me are one of the things that make my life so much easier when I'm trying to set things up and figure out layouts. Digital calipers, I think you can get them for like 25 bucks at one of the big home improvement stores. But this right here is absolutely one of the tools that I could not live without, has to be in my tooling kit. So if you're enjoying the video, do me a favor, click that like button. It takes about two seconds. Tells me, tells YouTube, tells Weaver that we're on the right track. So the next tool is one that you're probably familiar with. We use it all the time, but there's different types of them. And that's gonna be the wing dividers. Most of the wing dividers that you have out there, you have to turn this little knob and that's what opens them up, right? Well, the ones that you can get from Weaver, they have a quick release on them. So if I squeeze this just a little bit, I can take that, that little knob and I can slide it out as far as I want and then I can open that up and then tighten it back down. And that makes it a lot faster, a lot easier to adjust when you're trying to set the width on a pair of wing dividers. So if we're talking about tooling leather and we're using leather stamps, then we gotta have some way to actually make the imprint with the stamps. We gotta have something to smack them with, right? Well, there's all kinds of different things that you can use out there. You can use essentially what's a mallet. You know, those are fine. My choice for it is gonna be a maul. 
and there's all different types of and all different levels and quality levels of malls out there some of the more economy ones that's what we'll call them one of the challenges with those is that they tend to loosen as you use them they're also they can have balance issues too and those two minor things right there can be very frustrating for a long time i used a 12 ounce economy uh, mall to do all the things that i've done and I didn't realize how off balance it was until I started using the mall from Barry King. This is a 16 ounce mall. Because of the way it's balanced, it actually feels about the same weight, maybe just a little bit lighter than the 12 ounce that I was using before. It's got a nylon head on it, it's got ribs on it, so your, your mall doesn't tend to slide, which can happen if you're not just dead center on the stamp solid brass fittings on it and it's got a lock nut where it tightens down a lock washer and that lock washer prevents it from loosening up as you use it it's got a leather stacked handle on it really comfortable really well balanced that is absolutely one of my favorite tools in my toolkit so when i first got into leather it, when it came to punching holes and that kind of stuff i really didn't know what i was doing i was just kind of winging it and one day I ended up driving a punch through a piece of leather straight into my concrete block that I was tooling on and I literally split that granite in half. And I learned pretty quickly why that's a bad idea. Not only did I need a new piece of granite, but I also destroyed the punch that I was using. So that was about $50 worth of stuff right down in the trash can. So after that, I started looking for other options. And there's pounder board, there's cutting mats, all that, you know, there's a variety of different things out there that you can use. What's become one of my favorites is the Novaline chopping board. Now this is, to, this would traditionally be used for clicker dies. You would put this in a, in a machine, they will come on all different sizes, put your leather up there, put your die up there, and then the, the machine would press down and cut out whatever piece of leather that you were trying to cut out. Well, these are fantastic for just use around your shop. You can use these with round end punches. You can use razor blades on these. You can punch holes for rivets. These are absolutely fantastic for that. They're not gonna damage your tools. They have a lot of wear and tear capability, more so than Poundo board. I've driven round end punches through Poundo board and I love Poundo board, but this to me is the way to go if you're trying to, uh, to have that nice solid surface and still not damage your tools. And next is by far the absolute cheapest, most disposable tool in my arsenal, and that would be a chip brush. Now you can get these at big box stores. They are, I think they're like 50 cents a piece or something like that. So when I go in, I'll, I'll buy a dozen or two dozen of these, something like that, and throw them into one of the boxes so I've got them when I need them. I use these for applying antique. They're fantastic for that. Uh, you can use these for painting, creating textures on your different projects that you're doing. A chip brush, while it's not sophisticated, it's not sexy, chip brush is definitely one of the best things that you can have in your arsenal just to make your life easier. That's gonna do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, Go make something amazing.